Now you know how to use the modular system and modulation. So we can finally get to the last theoretical tutorial, the Globals tab. Most of the tab is covered by a single envelope, the global envelope. By default, this is applied onto the output of each voice and that fits most scenarios. What the attack, release and other parameters do is pretty obvious, but let me change them a bit and play that for you. You may have noticed that you can actually use per voice modulation on the global envelope parameters. So I can, for example, make the attack shorter for higher velocities. Every time I press a key, a new voice is allocated with the global envelope and generator modules and other settings. When I release the key, the global envelope jumps to the release stage and once the release stage ends, the voice ends with it. But the voicing is much more complex than it may seem. For that, we need to check the voicing mode parameter. The default polyphonic one per note mode is actually quite a unique thing. It lets you play as many notes as you need, but if you start playing the same note with sustain, or if you have a controller which has multiple keys for the same note, M Sound Factory will automatically release the previous note, making sure only one note per key will survive. Polyphonic mode, you know. The instrument just plays every note, and if you hold sustain or something, once you run out of voices, it starts killing the oldest ones, for example. Trigger mode is useful for percussive sounds, as it has no sustain. And finally the monophonic mode, which is actually the most complex one, because there are many ways it can behave. By default, it works like this. To see what I mean, you need to click the big Advanced Settings button, which looks like a playground for scientists. The first parameter, Voice Restart Mode, is what I was talking about. Imagine you play one note in monophonic mode and press another one. Should the instrument just change pitch? Should it smoothly transition to the attack portion of the envelope? Should it restart the global envelope? Should it create a new voice and release the previous one? Should it abruptly kill the previous voice and start a new one? Monotoggle is easy to understand. Allow multiple monophonic voices, not so. For that, I need a long release time. Let me show you now. There are several options, which are a bit too scientific to bother now. 
Stop voices when silent is quite interesting though. Remember when I said a voice is finished when the global envelope ends? In some cases, this may not be ideal at all, namely when using samples. Most samples naturally contain an envelope and the sound ends when the sample ends, unless it's looping. So there's a different way to end a voice using this parameter. When not off, the engine will measure the output of each voice and when a voice is silent for a specified time period, the engine terminates it. Global ADSR use is related to that. By default, it is applied to the voice output signal. That's the value volume. But you can also disable it when you don't want to use the envelope for that. And there's another mode called volume squared, which applies the volume a bit differently. Works the same way, sounds different. I'll leave the remaining options to you, if you dare, to become a scientist. There's another big panel here though, the glide. You probably know that. There are again, several options defining its behavior. Glide time is pretty obvious. Shape curve as well. What we should mention is the always switch, which makes the glide work even if you're not holding any key at the moment. Since we're in the advanced settings, let's explore the rest of it. First, the velocity shape tab. There's a transformation curve you know, from other instruments. But there are also settings defining how the velocity affects the volume of the voice. Let me play a sequence of notes with increasing velocity with different values of the range parameter. Controller tab contains various settings for MIDI controllers. You should mostly notice the transformation curves again. The smoothing panel contains smoothing times for each controller. This is quite necessary since MIDI specification has a horrific resolution, just 128 values per controller, and you could draw abrupt shapes in your door anyways. So this makes sure the controllers won't behave too steppy and abrupt. To show you what I mean, let me attach the modulation wheel to the semitones parameter of my oscillator again. And now let me change it as slowly as I can with smoothing at zero milliseconds. Now, let me increase the smoothing. Finally, the harmony tab, which lets you play multiple voices with a single key. That's all when it comes to the advanced settings. Wasn't that hard, was it? Back to the main screen. Global volume and panorama are pretty straightforward, but it's time to tell you what exactly the set button in the plugin toolbar does. Watch the gain parameter 
as I press it. Your eyes probably met the quality and rendering quality. There are several levels of these and these affect various processes, such as whether oscillators use anti-aliasing, how quickly does the modulation update, internal oversampling for non-linear processes, and many others. It's safe to say that the higher the quality, the more CPU it requires. Rendering quality is used only for offline rendering in your door, if it supports it, and if it is actually better than the normal quality setting. So how do you set this up without wasting the CPU power? By listening, of course. Let me demonstrate. I have a simple saw oscillator here. I'll play quite a high note, set the quality to lowest, and gradually increase it. You probably noticed the horrible aliasing in the lowest quality, but above that, I didn't hear a relevant difference. That's because even the medium quality activates the anti-aliasing capability of the oscillators, and that's all we need to get true analog quality. But things can get quite worse when I try to do some hard shape transformation modulation. Let me set the transformation to async, which is quite brutal, and attach it to the LFO. Now let's do the same thing. Here I feel like at least extreme eight times quality is needed for good results. Back to the globals. Global pitch is pretty obvious. It lets you set the pitch, tuning, and even custom micro-tuning if you're into that stuff. And then there's the analog panel we already talked about. To remind you, it automatically enables lots of various per voice modulations to make each note different and evolve in time. Just enable it and you can already see that even the global ADSR parameters are now modulated. That's enough of the theoretical stuff. Next time, we'll finally make some sounds.